Former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard from Hawaii, Democrat, joins us now. Congresswoman, great to see you. Uh, I know you've just you been too, out of the Brian. job for a week or two. Are you surprised they're pushing forward with this uh, extra surveillance on would-be domestic terror? Uh, it's so dangerous. You know, as you guys have been talking about, this is an issue that all Democrats, Republicans, independents, libertarians should be extremely concerned about, uh, especially because we don't have to guess about where this goes or how this ends. When you have people like former CIA director John Brennan openly talking about how he's spoken with uh, or heard from appointees and nominees in the Biden administration who are already starting to look across our country uh, for these types of movements similar to the insurgencies they've seen overseas that, in his words, he says, make up this unholy alliance of religious extremists, uh, racists, bigots. Uh, he lists a few others and adds at the end even libertarians. So when you look at their process and they start looking at, okay, how do, what characteristics right. are we looking for as we're building this profile of a potential extremist, uh, what are we talking about? A religious extremist, are we talking about uh, Christians, evangelical Christians? What is, an, what is a religious extremist? Is it somebody who's pro-life? I mean, what, where, do you, where do you take this? Uh, you start looking at, okay, well, obviously you have to be a white person, obviously likely male, libertarians, well, if anybody who loves freedom, liberty, maybe has an American flag outside their house, or uh, people who, you know, attended a Trump rally. Uh, once you start walking this down the path, you see where it leads to a very dangerous undermining of our civil liberties, mm -hmm. our freedoms in our Constitution, and a targeting of almost half of the country. Ewan Omar says this, um, we already have laws on the books, sorry, but you are just going to have to learn to apply them. The other thing I thought was interesting, uh, Congresswoman, I don't see any FBI demanding more tools. They feel they got no. the tools. These are, these are uh, congressional leaders or members who feel as though they're so, uh, uh, they're so freaked out by Trump supporters, they still can't understand why anyone would support him. They want to get to the bottom of it. And do you think the whole deprogramming of Trump supporters, this new buzzword among uh, detractors and Democrats, has anything to do with this? Uh, yeah, I, I think it does very directly. I think just on the FBI front, I read a great op-ed this morning from a former FBI agent who made a very strong case for why this new uh, domestic terror law introduced by Adam Schiff is wrong and, and is, is directly going to undermine our, our constitutional rights and freedoms. Um, this whole effort, whether you're talking about this bill or people saying that we have to deprogram these, these Trump cultists and people who voted for Trump because they've been radicalized, all of this just goes to further mm -hmm. tear our country apart. And it moves towards the thing Joe Biden said in his inauguration speech that, that he shouldn't happen, which is a dehumanization right. of your opponent. And that's where his voice is so necessary right now. He is right. the president of this country. He delivered this speech, his voice, himself, speaking to the American people. He needs to denounce people like John Brennan and their statements, bills like the one Adam Schiff put forward, and truly speak to the American people about how we must come right. together around you know, the Constitution, around our Bill of Rights, around these rights that have been endowed to us by our Creator. If he had your leadership ability, he would do it. Maybe he still will. Uh, that's why she ran for president. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard, thanks so much. Thank you, Brian.